let's stop right there. Now, I got to be honest with you. Um, for the people who are watching this on the channel, you're probably wondering what's going on. I'm doing something different. I'm still going to be covering boxing, but something I always wanted to do was to branch out more. I've covered documentaries in the past. I've covered scandals in the past between this channel and the last channel I was on into the arena. But I got to tell you, this is an unfortunate but hilarious story. And I'm probably going to do it in multiple parts because this video here from Mad Money is actually from CNBC five years ago, October of 2015. Since then... This lady right here, creepy lady with these crazy, like, big, blue, creepy eyes. She managed to fool people, well-known people, bankers, financiers, in the tune of $9 billion. That this machine right here, the Edison machine, can take just one drop of blood. You know how the um, uh, diabetics do with the uh, finger prick? One drop of blood that will be put into a small cartridge called a nanotainer. And that with that one drop of blood, you can go to, at that point in time, it was in uh, Walgreens. You can go to a Walgreens or they were hoping for you to be able to have these machines in your home. So you get a finger prick, you go pop this little nanotainer into this machine and the machine will tell you okay this is what you need call your doctor you got cancer no i'm not trying to scare anybody but it was supposed to be that type of technology where you can do your own blood tests from either where this machine would be or from you know your own home so basically this woman told one of the biggest lie scams of all time. She goes to court in August of this year, 2020. And shockingly enough, you'll be surprised how many people don't know about this. You may hear this Theranos, 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 but do you actually know what it is? We're going to talk about it. Oh, man, I'm teaching three controversy. I was going to say we cover every single major fight live, but this is not, uh, this is not a fight. So... Bear with me. We'll start at the beginning. I grew up spending summers and the holidays with my uncle. I remember his love of crossword puzzles and trying to teach us to play football. I remember how much he loved the beach. I remember how much I loved him. He was diagnosed one day with skin cancer which all of a sudden was brain cancer and in his bones. He didn't live to see his son grow up, and I never got to say goodbye. We define diagnosis today as the determination of the presence of disease from its signs and symptoms. Yet diseases often begin so much earlier than when symptoms first appear. We see a world in which every person has access to actionable health information at the time it matters. A world in which no one ever has to say, if only I'd known sooner. So let me stop right there. Um... For one, her voice is said to be fake. She, uh, when she was in college, which she dropped out of, we're going to show you a clip of that. She had, a, according to people who knew her, had a valley girl voice, high pitched, you know, womanly voice. There's been, it's been said that multiple times, you know, whether she had too much liquor in her system or whatever, she would, um, forget to put on the husky voice so she put this voice on because she wants to feel or to come across as more authoritative i remember when i first heard it i was like yo the fuck like is that really you know her voice but basically this is her on ted talks they pretty much scrubbed this on from the uh, from youtube from their page but other people uploaded it with her you know giving a speech that people you know found out later was also fake about how her uncle had died and that, you know, she wanted to create something 
that, you know, you know, you can find out behold beforehand or know right then and there. So say, for example, if you're feeling ill one day and you don't know what it is and you go to, you know, use this Edison machine finger prick, put the blood in the capsule, put the capsule in the machine, the machine tell you call your physician immediately. You know, you may have a blood clot or you're at risk of a stroke or something like that. This is the technology that, you know, she was trying to produce. The biggest problem is the biggest question that she's never answered. I've watched dozens of interviews from this woman on the Internet. She has not been able to tell you how they'll be able to do how they're able to do so much or to get so much information from a drop of blood. So for those who've had blood drawn before for testing, it usually takes multiple vials. I was in a coma. I was in the ICU I, uh, for weeks. I know the like when they got to come in every night to take up that blood. I couldn't stand it. You know, it's annoying. But she was she was lying about creating something that could not only, you know, help, you know, people at home, but help in the hospital. The biggest problem was it was all the fraud. And more importantly, People's test was coming back all nag fucked up. Basically, like this woman is, 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 is she's up shit's creek. She's up shit's creek. So what I'm going to pull up now is, well, actually, I'm going to let this play through so you can see like how deep she was in her shit. With this, it's a scam. Nine billion dollars. And it's not being talked about every day. Nine billion dollars. She was a fake doctor that dropped out of school. Like basically, she dropped out of Stanford after about two years. Put on a lab coat and went and borrowed all his money and raised all his money and started this fake organization. Nine billion dollars. A world in which no one ever has to say goodbye too soon. Technology can and is transforming our world and many policy issues along with it. Today, laboratory information drives 70 to 80% of clinical decisions. Yet until a few months ago, people in many states couldn't even get copies of their own lab results for tests ordered for them by their physicians, even if they paid for it. Now at six, a high-flying CEO now facing prison time, accused of masterminding a billion-dollar fraud. Our cameras rolling as the woman behind biotech company Theranos shows up for court. Good evening, I'm Ken Bastida. And I'm Elizabeth Cook. Theranos had claimed to have developed a miracle blood test requiring only the prick of a finger. But it all came crashing down, landing the creators right in the middle of a criminal investigation. KPIX 5's Lim Ramirez was there as former CEO Elizabeth Holmes walked into federal court. Len? Liz, this case will probably go down in Silicon Valley history as a very significant case because it involves a lot of investors and an idea that apparently now seems just too good to be true. Elizabeth Holmes was once the high-flying CEO of Theranos, a biotech company that promised to revolutionize blood testing by reducing it to a pinprick. But today, she walks silently into federal court accused of defrauding millions of dollars from investors and patients in a case that could send her to prison for 20 years if convicted. The main thing that everyone's going to be looking for is how much the people in charge knew. Holmes and her ex-boyfriend and Theranos president Ramesh Sunny Balwani are accused of masterminding a gigantic fraud that resulted in their company being valued at over $9 billion at one point. Their technology was supposed to enable several blood tests from only a few drops of a patient's blood. But the federal indictment accuses Holmes and Balwani of faking the results of FDA-approved human testing to make it look like Theranos was working, but the results allegedly came from other sources. This is medical fraud also. The FDA is involved here. This is technology upon which people's lives depend. 
And so you have consumers, you have doctors and investors all defrauded. So the question for the federal government is, how did this get this far? Federal prosecutors did not comment on the case, but in a status hearing today, the government said it needed more time to turn over 12 million pages of documents to the defense for discovery. Do you have anything to say to the investors who relied on you? The patients, the medical patients? Holmes and her attorney said nothing as they left the courthouse. A business failure, uh, which happens a lot here in Silicon Valley, is not fraud. But Mr. Balwani's attorney said his client is innocent. Mr. Balwani, as you know, never made a dime from Theranos. He invested millions of dollars of his own money. He never sold a share of stock. Um, and had his own mother tested at the lab. Prosecutors said today uh, they told the judge that they would produce another 6 million pages of documents by next week. But due to the sheer volume in this case, uh, some 16 million pages of documents overall, uh, no trial date has been set. In fact, the next status hearing is set for January 14th. So what I gather from the information, um, as it stands right now, the whole world is pretty much on lockdown via um, COVID-19 coronavirus. Hope everybody's staying safe. She is trying to use the coronavirus excuse to have the trial pushed back. The trial is for, in fact, I'm going to pull it up right here while we're live. So I don't like editing videos. And as time goes on, when I do these type of videos, I am going to have to um, edit them. But in the meantime, I like to do these videos real time and pause and, you know, go look at the content while I'm live and talking. So right now it is saying that, oh, let me stop this. I'll uh, give you a little bit of detail. So Elizabeth Ann Holmes, 36 years old. I must point out she idolized Steve Jobs. In fact, during the second half of this video, we're going to go look at some content from the HBO documentary on her. There's also a couple of movies in the works and a miniseries in the works about her. Crazy. Like a really, really creepy woman. By the way, the guy they were talking about, Sonny Bawani, is said to have been her boyfriend. He's, what, 54, 55 years old. Right now, by the way, she is free. She's um, up in San Francisco somewhere. Remember Inside Edition? They're actually still around and they caught up with her. So wait a minute. Her trial is in February 2020. Holmes defense requested a federal court drop all charges against her and her co-defendant. A federal judge examined the charges and ruled that some charges should be dropped. Since the Theranos blood tests were paid for by medical insurance company, the patients were not deprived of any money or property. Prosecutors would hence not be allowed to argue that blah, blah, blah. The judge kept the other... 11 charges of fraud. So where did they say the trial? I could have sworn I saw it on here. There it is. Trial is set to begin um, August 2020. So I'm going to pull up this clip really quick. And we're going to go from there. Please subscribe. And I never got to say goodbye. The right to protect the health and well-being of every person of those we love is a basic human right. Over the course of the last 11 years, we've made it possible to run comprehensive laboratory tests from a few drops of blood that could be taken from a finger. And we've made it possible to eliminate the tubes and tubes of blood that traditionally have to be drawn from an arm and replaced it with the nanotainer. And if I had one wish standing here with all of you, it would be that no one has to go through the pain of traditional phlebotomy. I was always absolutely terrified of, of giving blood. It's the only thing in my life I've ever been scared of. If we were to sit here and dream up torture experiments, psychologically, the concept of sticking large needles 
over and over into someone and draining out so much blood while they're watching this blood being sucked out of them that you basically completely debilitated them. That qualifies as a pretty good torture experiment in my book. I find it quite disturbing. So we'll begin right here. So yeah, it's 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 some crazy ass shit. Now, I've been on this whole thing over the last few years that I've been researching and studying these scandals of the names like um Enron, Enron, the Fire Festival, uh this, the Franklin scandal, you know, just things that I've heard about before, you know, on um, the Oklahoma City bombing, just things I've heard about before, and I've been di digging deep and I just can't imagine and it gets a it, it gets a lot deeper than this. You can't just talk about it in in a 15, 20 minute, one hour video. So, for example, here we're going to start right here. Go right back to the beginning. This is when things started to really, really fall apart because what was coming out was there was a reporter in the next part. By the way, I'm going to be doing multiple parts on this. In the next part, depending how well this does, in the next part. We're going to go talk about the people and uh, the, the the reporter who exposed all of this. So right during this time, back in 2015, shit was still going good. Um, everything was still up and running, but there were many questions because what was going on is these Theranos um, um, laboratories. They were in they were in Walgreens, if I'm correct were in some Safeway uh, supermarkets or on their way to Safeway supermarkets. And basically the people would go in thinking that they would get the little finger prick, but they would actually be given an actual needle. So you hear what she's saying here, right? With her big crazy eyes about, you know, let's go. I, I want you to hear it again. And he's going to address her. That traditionally have to be drawn from an arm and replaced it with the nanotainer. And if I had one wish standing here with all of you, it would be that no one has to go through the pain of traditional phlebotomy. Now, let's stop right there, and since we're at the end of this video, well, this first one, we're going to move over to this. I want you to see this right here. When I think of Theranos, I really feel like there were two entirely different worlds. There was the carpeted world, and there was the tiled world. And the carpeted world was where Elizabeth was a goddess. Everyone, you know, almost worshipped the ground she walked on. She could do no wrong. She was the next Steve Jobs. Theranos was changing the world. And then you go onto the tile side and nothing works. We're on a sinking ship. Everything's a lie. Reconciling the differences between those two worlds was really hard for me to do. I knew Elizabeth personally from all these interactions through my family. Um, so I really trusted her, I believed in her. I would leave the tiled world thinking, oh man, sinking ship, and I would go have one conversation with Elizabeth. Theranos was founded with the goal of creating a more actionable experience. If you can begin to understand your body, understand And I would be so motivated to go back and work, and I felt like I was changing the world again. And I would go back into the tile world, and I would go, wait, what just, what just happened? You want it to be true so badly. At the end of the day, you know, everything was, you know, when is that much money involved? And when people start asking questions, when you're dealing with people's health and, you know, you're sending back bad results, you know, at the end of the day, she knew that the shit was all bullshit. And you think to yourself, how could somebody. I got to be honest with you, I'm fascinated, I'm compelled, I've been watching all this stuff over and over and over again, wondering how could somebody just lie like that? And me, I'm dealing with my own little situation with the uh, Philadelphia family court system. And I just, I don't understand it. And they say, it's called being a sociopath. 
You just don't care how many people are affected. You know, as long as your pockets are getting lined. And the fact that she was able to raise that much money influenced that many people off of nothing. And it gets worse. Anyway, I'm going to do a part two on T Street Controversy. I cover every single major fight live. We're branching out a little bit. Please subscribe.